I think back to like my early fandom days and I'm like, oh, never really read like YN or OC stuff, but like going early, early, it's like, oh my God, I did. I did. I have seen things you wouldn't believe. So I often see comments from you lovely viewers saying stuff like, is Coley in every single fandom ever? How is Coley in this many fandoms? Every time I enter a new fandom, there's Coley. Queen of fandoms, master of fandom scholar, all very flattering stuff, and I appreciate your faith in me immensely, but I do want to set the record straight. My dears, I have a confession. I am not in every single fandom. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Oh, if your expectations were not met and your trust is broken, the door's right there. I can't believe you've done this. But after some digging and jogging my memory a bit, I realized I was in a lot more fandoms than I initially thought. And even though I'm only really active in like a handful of fandoms today, the accumulation of all the fandoms I've been in over like 15 years is a lot. Which begs the question, what fandoms were and am I in? Now, a couple years ago, I did make a video ranking fandoms I was in, thinking that, oh, this is like at least the bulk of every fandom I've been in. But no, I missed a lot. To be fair, a good chunk of them were pretty short-lived, or I just was young at the time, so I didn't register them as being in a fandom. And some of them I think I just wiped clean from my memory for a variety of reasons. So I came up with a list of criteria to determine if I was just a fan of something or if I was actually in the fandom for it. And this was more of like a personal criteria list. It's not a one size fits all thing. So if you wanna take bits and bobs from it and add it to your own list of, hey, was I in this fandom or not? Then be my guest. But if I ticked off the majority of these qualifications, then I was in the fandom. I was in insert random fandom here if I have read fan fiction for it. I searched for fan art photos and visual media for it numerous times on numerous platforms for that matter. Examples being Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, DeviantArt. I bought merch for it. I bought fan made merchandise for it. It gave me intense brain rot for at least a few weeks. I have info dumped about it on multiple occasions to multiple people. I am familiar with or at least recognize popular headcanons and fan in from the fandom. There are fan creators whose content I really enjoy and actively keep an eye out for. I've cosplayed or expressed interest in cosplaying for it. I've spent hours on the Wikipedias. There are specific episodes, chapters, timestamps, scenes, etc. that I have remembered well or even have memorized. And I've genuinely enjoyed watching edits for it, whether I looked it up myself or they were recommended to me. This is going to get its own video in the near future, but there are different ways of being in a fandom for something. Take, for instance, Chunk of the fan base is going to be talking about strictly canon things like oh who would beat who in this fight or theorizing about what's going to happen next in this chapter and then on the flip side you have this other chunk of the fan base talking about strictly fanon things like fan fiction shipping and headcanons and then of course there's overlap to varying degrees with those two chunks it's just a whole spectrum and then there's having like a peripheral fandom as well when like you know what's going on but you're not really in it but like you know about it because your friends are in it anyway so i thought it'd be fun to take you guys along for the ride and share my fandom journey from when I was first starting out, when I was like 10 or 11, up until now when it's my literal job to talk to you guys about fan culture. A retrospective fandom experience. Feel free to play along at home. And I've seen some sh so without further ado, let's get started. But before we dive into my juicy fandom history, let's go ahead and dive into some snacks and goodies from the sponsor of today's video, Sakurako and Tokyo Tree. Sakurako and Tokyo Tree are monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes that offer a wide variety of different goodies for you to munch on, as well as a way to enjoy Japanese culture from the comfort of your own home. The boxes offer different specialties. If you're more interested in traditional, authentic, artisan Japanese snacks from local snack makers, then Sakurako is the box for you. Each box includes delicious teas and one piece of special Japanese tableware. November's box features wasaka crane chopsticks. Quick question, how do you guys hold your chopsticks? Because I was raised doing it like this, but I know some people cross them. I don't know if they can do it like that. I'm sure there's other ways out there as well, but how do you personally do it? But if you're looking for something more modern with exclusive limited edition snacks influenced by pop culture, then Tokyo Tree is the box for you with seasonal snacks and instant ramen bowl and a drink in every box. Booklets are also included that go over each snack in the boxes so you can decide what you want to try first and what would suit your taste best. The boxes have different monthly themes as well to highlight quality Japanese ingredients and foods as the seasons go by. Sakurako's November theme is the 
wonders of Saitama. I really enjoyed these refreshing Saitama pear gummies. I'm so excited for these. I had these types of gummies all the time when I was in Japan and these are pear flavored on top of it, which is perfect for autumn. Yeah, these are good. These are really, really freaking good. Damn, damn. The walnut mochi. Mmm. I'm actually not the biggest fan of nuts, but in mochi form, they're delightful. This is really good. Honestly, this would not be a bad Christmas confection. Like instead of the Christmas cookies, you open up a tin and it's just 20 of these inside. The Oni and Otofuku Rakugan. Hmm, that's interesting. It's like a cross between a peep and a wafer cookie in the best way possible. And the Red Bean Daifuku. It's mochi season. I mean, it's red bean mochi. Can you ever go wrong with that? Tokyo Treats November theme is Mount Fuji Snack Venture. I really liked the Mount Fuji green tea cake. Green tea boucher from Fuji-san. Mmm, <laughs> it's like I'm eating the moon behind me. <laughs> oh, this bread is delicious. And that matcha cream in the middle is so pillowy and smooth. The Peach Kit Kat. Jujutsu Kaisen spoilers in three, two, one. Oh, wrong way. Like a peach ring melted on a Kit Kat. The ways I want to talk to me. The Deca Vita vitamin C drink. Smells citrusy. Why did I blow? Orange pixie sticks. This tastes like if orange pixie sticks were put into soda form. And I really like pixie sticks. And the ice cream candy DIY kits. It's soda flavored. It's gonna be so delicious. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna do some science here. We have a little spoon to scoop the cream we're gonna make into these little wafer ice cream cones. Step one, I gotta put the powder in here. Soda. I just have to add two teaspoons of water, mix well, and voila. Yeah, we're really getting to the holiday cheer right now. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Soda ice cream in a wafer. Fun and tasty. After I have the other two cones, there's still gonna be a lot of cream left. Do I just like, slurp that down. Oh, this one's not as pretty. It's sorry. Oh, as I just showed you guys, Sakurako and Tokyo Treat are both offering a lot of fun stuff this month. With the holiday season about to ramp up, it's the perfect excuse to start stuffing your face with a bunch of delicious food. Whether you're a foodie, an anime fan, a fan of Japanese culture as a whole, or just want some new snacks to try and share with your friends, these boxes are fantastic. So if you're down to give Sakurako and or Tokyo Treat a try, then use my code Koli for $5 off your first Sakurako or Tokyo treat box through my links in the description. I can't thank Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat enough for being longtime supporters of my channel and content. Now let's get back into it. Twilight. That's right, I was a Twilight girly. I was really into Twilight when I was in sixth grade, which I really shouldn't have been reading it when I was, God, 11 or 12. A child. I read a lot of Twilight fanfic, but funnily enough, it wasn't for Bella and Edward a lot of the time. It was usually either Carlisle and Esme or Jasper and Alice. Harry Potter. I got into Harry Potter kind of late to the game, honestly. Like a lot of my friends were reading it in elementary school, but I didn't start until seventh or eighth grade. I was really into the next gen stuff of like Harry's son and Draco's son and Hermione and Ron's kids are all mingling together. I loved reading Time Turner AUs where the kids get a hold of a Time Turner and then go back to the past and it's like, oh my God, we're right in the middle of when Voldemort came back into being and we have to help our parents save the day. Nowadays, while I don't really consider myself active in the Harry Potter fandom, I do really appreciate seeing all the fan and stuff people come up with. Maximum Ride. This was a series by James Patterson where all of the characters were genetically engineered to have wings. They were spliced with bird DNA and they all had like different species. So like, um, there was one character I really liked named Iggy. Iggy had albatross yeah. DNA. Yeah, I loved reading Iggy XOC stories because I liked Iggy a lot. Again, this was another series where I loved the side characters. This is so funny because I think back to like my early fandom days and I'm like, oh, I never really read like YN or OC stuff, but like going early, early, it's like, oh my God, I did. I did. Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson was so good. It's still so good. I'm curious to see where it's gonna go fandom wise because it's gonna be a whole new generation of people joining in. There's people like me who read it when they were like, you know, Percy's age and they kind of grew up with Percy as he was growing up. And now cut to how many years later where we're all in our like, 20s or early 30s and lo and behold there's a new media for it. Persebeb. 
was my jam. I just love them both as characters, you know, like had a big old crush on Percy and Annabeth thinking about it. Big old crush on Apollo as well, so I read a bunch of Apollo-centric stories. This is like another book series that really made up my middle school experience. Middle school was just like the era of book fandoms for me. Hunger Games. I really don't know how, but I actually forgot I was in this fandom. God knows I was the biggest PETA Katniss shipper out there. And I also was absolutely obsessed with Finnick O'Dare. Like I read so much Finnick and Annie fanfic. Cause not gonna lie, I did and still do have a soft spot for the lady killer X weirdo trope. The Mortal Instruments, a series that I didn't realize was Ginny Ron fanfiction until way, way later. If you didn't know that, then now you know. Well, I wouldn't say the brain rot for the series was as intense as say like Percy Jackson or Harry Potter for me. It still was there. Jason Clary, Jerry. Huh? Jerry Place. I don't know if that's better or worse. Top tier ship for me, as well as Malik, Magnus, and Alec. Malik broke up at some point, but then like they got back together and then Magnus's ex-girlfriend was a vampire and she was like taunting Alec about like not living forever. But then Magnus was like, no, I'd give up my immortality for him. <laughs> details just come like shoo, 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 back into my head. Night World. This one might be a bit more underground for people. This book series was written by the same author as The Vampire Diaries. LJ Smith loved her works. She made my middle school experience what it was. In addition to vampires and werewolves, you also had shapeshifters, witches. Galen was the prince of the shapeshifters I had a crush on. He ended up with this girl named Keller who could shapeshift into a panther and he was set to marry this witch royalty girl who didn't know she was witch royalty but she had to join because she was like this um wildfire freaking chosen one i understand all those words separately brain rot for this runs deep i'm just remembering all these little details i'm like oh my god wait i like that character and that character ash redfern my boy. I lived in the night world section of fanfiction.net for months in middle school. The Vampire Diaries. The Vampire Diaries predated Twilight by, I think, over a decade. But it's funny how the show came out of like vampire mania that Twilight inspired and it comes full circle. The show and the books diverged pretty early on. Like the books at some point had Kitsune spirits involved and then Damon was a human. I don't remember if Damon became human in the show or not, but it was really funny. But I actually was a big Bonnie Damon shipper, so I read a lot of fic for that. The Secret Circle, yet another LJ Smith series. The series is kind of what you'd expect out of like a young adult book series about witches. Like, oh, she discovers Cassie. Cassie realizes that she has witch lineage and she joins this coven of other witch teens and they perform magic together. Anyway, I was really into the side characters. There were these twins. I had a whole OC in my head that I shipped one of the twins with. This is so much fun. I'm having a blast going back to like baby Coley days and I just want to like look at my younger self and be like, oh, you don't know what's to come, honey. <laughs> The Forbidden Game, another LJ Smith book. TLDR, it's kind of like Jumanji, but for angsty teenagers. And the main villain slash potential love interest looks like Gojo. It was really mind and I loved it. Really disliked the fact that the girl didn't end up with the villain in the end though. Cartoons! This one is a pretty broad category because a lot of these I saw when I was young but then kind of got back into when I got older and really really got into fan culture. The experience the second time around was a lot different. But starting off, I was really into DC, DC Comics. Any iteration of Justice League or Batman and then of course Teen Titans and Young Justice. I really like how regardless of what media you're looking at, the core cast of characters, even if they're not there overtly, there'll be like a whisper of them. Everything is always connected in comic universes and with DC there are many universes you have to worry about. I actually started getting really back into DC recently with a lot of like the Wayne family adventures stuff, kind of like Bat family shenanigans. A lot of the found family dynamics there and I also really like Tim Con. Trying to get my fix with Tim Con though after being so spoiled with other ships I've loved in different fandoms has been something to get used to. I may just have to make my own stuff and throw it into the universe. I love all of the Robin stuff. They each bring their own distinct flavor to being Batman's partner in crime, but I have to admit, Dick Grayson, Nightwing is still my favorite. And I recently binged the Harley Quinn animated series, which was fantastic and hilarious. My Harl Ivy heart was screaming. Oh my God, it had a whole black canary and green arrow face too. Jeez, I forgot about that. Dude, with Young Justice, 
Spitfire was my jam. McGann and Superboy were cute too, but like now that I'm on the Tim Con train, it's kind of weird seeing him be with like that generation versus like the comic generation he's part of. I really liked Jinx and Kid Flash together. And I don't know how it started, but I was really obsessed with this side villain named Kid Wicked. Definitely remember reading some self-insert fix for him. Ben 10. I read a lot of Gwen and Kevin fanfic back in the day when he got stuck and had all those different materials he was made out of. I was really, really into that. I just love any media that has shape-shifting in it, and Ben 10 had alien shape-shifting. So cool to me. Ben and Julie were also really great, but they broke up in a later season, and that broke my heart because they were so cute together. Generator Rex was created by the same people who did Ben 10, I think, but Generator Rex took place in a world where you could get infected by these things that could either turn you into a monster or give you some sort of superpower, and for Rex, our titular hero, he could turn different parts of his body into machinery. Rex got together with this girl named Cersei, who kind of ran with this bad crowd who used their powers for evil purposes, but then there was also like this corrupt government. Anyway, shipped Rex with a bunch of random OCs I came up with, and Cersei, but Cersei kind of got my nerves sometimes because she wasn't like really nice. I had a bit of an attitude and I was like, well, Rex doesn't deserve attitude. He's a good guy. Transformers. <laughs> I completely forgot that I had a Transformers phase. But yo, no, because I had an aunt and uncle that got my brother a bunch of like these Transformer uh, toys that were huge. And I started watching the cartoons and got into a bunch of Transformers stuff with my brother. And then the movies came out and so that added on to it. I really liked Bumblebee. And as I recently discovered, the terminology for the not safe for work side of that fan base is something else. I have seen you wouldn't believe. I also just thought they were really cool. I like mechs. <laughs> the Dragon Prince. This is a fandom that I've been meaning to get more into. I was really into it at the beginning, but then as I kept going, I kind of just had other stuff pile on top of my plate. Really excited to see where it's gonna go in the next season. I'm really debating who to cosplay though. Like I was totally gonna do a Claudia cosplay, but then I was like, oh, there's other characters I could do too though. The Owl House! Again, another fandom that I need to get more into. I was into it at its start, but then other fandoms started occupying my time, and then I lost track, and now I have to play catch up, but I love it. Would also love to cosplay something from the Owl House. If you have any suggestions, then throw them at me. He's a phantom. Was Heike obsessed with Ember, the rock star ghost, as well as Desiree, the genie ghost, and then the punk motorcycle chick ghost as well? Are you sensing a pattern here? Avatar, the last airbender, and the legend of Korra. Avatar totally took over my brain at the start of middle school, like fifth grade going into sixth grade. Big Zutara stand back in the day. I still am. Not to like that degree, but I, they have a special place in my heart. Kurosami, of course, is fantastic. I was losing my shit when I watched the finale. Really, really fond memories of scouring deviant art back in the day, just trying to find all the fan art I could and watching AMVs, but like, Thinking back on them, not the best AMVs. I loved Suka, Suki, and Sokka together. I did like Aang and Toph together as well. They weren't like as diehard as Utara and Suka for me, but I enjoyed the pairing. That would be so weird though, thinking about like if they did get together and then the concept. Wow. <laughs> I followed the comics to a point, like where they find Zuko's mom and take a Zuko along for the ride. Avatar The Last Airbender was the first fandom where I was actively seeking out fan content, and Asami Sato was my very first cosplay from Legend of Korra, so this fandom means a lot to me. Even though it's not necessarily the very beginning of my fandom journey, it's where I became aware of like what fandom was. Ruby! Oh, Ruby. I was a wise cosplayer for a number of years. I would love to bring her back, but I don't know if I'm willing to put in the effort to make her cosplay again. The show's had its ups and downs, but overall I've had a pretty good experience with the fandom personally. I never really got involved with like the shipping war aspect of it, so that definitely took away a lot of the drama. Ruby's a fandom where I'm very flexible with the shipping. Like, oh, these two characters? Cool. Oh, these two characters? Cool. Bumblebee's very cute though. I'm glad that it became a thing. My heart aches every time I think about Jean and Pyrrha. Ren Nora is adorable. <laughs> I don't know what else to say other than it got me my start on YouTube. I lived through the great Clamps Sheath shipping wars of 2017.
2018? 2018? I cosplayed Keith and Shiro for a couple years and I was very proud of the Shiro arm I made. And every time I see Voltron content in the year of our Lord 2023, I get jump scared. Voltron is certainly not the first volatile fandom experience I've had, but it's definitely one I'll remember because whether I liked it or not, I was pulled into the front lines a bit. But I still do have very fond memories from that fandom and my mini clan shrine is there to commemorate those memories. Symbionic Titan. This was really a blast from the past. I watched this as it came out on Cartoon Network and I was so bummed it got cancelled. It had a lot of potential. It low-key gave me prototype Voltron vibes. I mean, Jesus, the male lead's name is Lance. But he looks exactly like Keith. What the f***? The action sequences were super cool, the animation is super distinct, and then of course we had this iconic scene. Yeah, no, this was on Cartoon Network. If this ever gets picked back up, I will be elated. Steven Universe! Uh, <laughs> That's really all I can describe this fandom as, just like... Uh. <laughs> I did a mean white diamond cosplay that was a pain to make, but I'm really proud of it. Made her wig when I was procrastinating for a linear algebra final in university. <laughs> Adventure time. Bubble for the win. This was just a fun fandom for me. It was the fandom I would go to for cute fan art. I read a handful of bubbling fix, but like I was more so interested in like the cosplay aspect of it, like all the edits people would make. The theories were a lot of fun to read when it was still going on. The show was just bad. And so the fandom, I think, in response to that was pretty, like, hot and cold in terms of, like, being chill. Like, it was either really, really chill or really, really bad. Fiona and Cake, a newer addition to this list. What a great follow-up to Adventure Time. How tight everything fits together and all of the interlocking details still blows my mind. Also, toxic Yuri reaction. Castlevania, dude! The animation is out of this world. I ship Trevor, Sifa, and Alucard as a unit. Do not separate them. Star versus the forces of evil. The early seasons were pretty strong and then I kind of just took a hit towards the end. I really liked Eclipsa. I cosplayed her even. Her and her monster husband Globgore were but yeah, it just felt like after the whole Meteora debacle, it kind of just was like, okay, now what? I still find myself going back and watching my favorite clips from it though. But the main three, I was happy with like any iteration of them. I liked Starco, I liked Tomstar, I liked Tomco. Tomco's probably my favorite thinking about it because I love the trope of like, oh, these two people have history with this person, but they end up getting together. What's the triad of them called? Just Star Tomco? Powerpuff <laughs> Girls was the first cartoon I became obsessed with and rewatch it now holy hell i had taste as like a six-year-old <laughs> it's just so fun the girls are so distinct from one another the villains are iconic the professor is daddy like if he wants a lady friend professor then um someone let him know that i have a phd in fandomology yet another show that i want to cosplay for and i want more merch from it the very first movie i ever saw in theaters was the powerpuff girls movie south park i debated including this one or not but considering the massive south park binge i had a few months ago all of the lore deep dives and the video essays I've watched on it. Even buying fan merch for it? I, yeah, I'll include it. And I really do want to visit Casa Bonita someday. Gravity Falls. I was watching this when it first came out. I stopped paying as much attention when the second season came around, but I hopped back onto it like as it was ending. I was there when the human bill cipher art first came to be. Tangle the series slash tangle the movie, just tangled in general. Look at him, that stupid smirk face he has. For my 12th birthday party, a bunch of my friends and I went to go see it in 3D in theaters and just seeing all of the lanterns floating at you, just as a 12 year old, it was magical. I think as a princess, I'm very similar to Rapunzel as well. <laughs> and Mother Gothel is still one of my favorite Disney villains. Yes, Gaslighting Queen. Loved Cassandra in the series as well. I have a cosplay for her I'm working on in like her electric blue haired, like moonstone form. That cowl she has is an itchy to work with. The songs from Tangle the Series are so good! They're so good, guys! That series is criminally underrated. Give it a shot if you're interested in Tangle at all. So many AMVs have used those songs and nobody knows where they're from! But also, I remember there being a very prominent AU focused around Varian that was on DeviantArt and Tumblr. It's funny seeing all these AUs that just take root in the fandom and become part of like the collective consciousness of it all. Total drama! I Island. I was 11 when this show premiered.
Hawk. I remember seeing the promos for it on Cartoon Network and it caught my attention because of the reality show elimination style format of it. Chris McLean is a sociopathic icon. The first season was fantastic. The second season... The third season had its moments, and then after that, I stopped paying attention. <laughs> I just remember rewatching episodes online when I should have been doing homework. <laughs> I was a huge Gwen and Trent shipper, was so sad when they broke up in the second season. Also liked Courtney and Duncan, and was kind of miffed when Gwen and Duncan became a thing instead. Apparently, there's a Toll Drama Island 2023 I may or may not check out. And I read a lot of Toll Drama Island fanfiction on DeviantArt. A lot. And I still see Total Drama OCs floating around from time to time time. Has been Hotel tell and Hell the Boss. Newer cartoon fandoms I've been in recently, but I've been having a good time. I love seeing people's different OCs they create for these shows. They're always super creative. I've definitely been jump scared by my fair share of NSFW fan art on Twitter. <laughs> Usually of Angel Dust or Luna or Blitzo and Stolas going at it. It still kind of baffles me how heated these fandoms can get though, because it's like, guys, these shows take place in hell. But I'm planning a Veronica Mayday cosplay, so stay tuned for that. I will have to paint myself hot pink, right? Critical Role, where professional voice actors play d and I am so, so happy they found the success they did. Like, I remember tuning in on Thursdays in 2016, like my freshman, sophomore year of college, and just watching the first campaign go down. Huge, huge Persalia shipper. I loved campaign two. I haven't been keeping up as much with campaign three, although I do know the gist of what's happening up until when um, Dorian left. But campaign one, I think is still my favorite just because it's how I started out and I really got attached to those characters. And they're the characters that are in the Amazon show, The Legend, of Vox Machina. It's hard to pick a favorite character. Scanlan was my number one for a while, but I think it just might have to be Percy. I'm just very fond of Critical Role. Doctor Who! <laughs> oh my god! I was into Doctor Who in high school, specifically like 2012 to like 2014. 14-ish. So peak Tumblr years. I was there for the whole Super Hula conglomerate. While I did enjoy Sherlock and I dipped my toes into Supernatural, Doctor Who was like my anchor point. 10 was my favorite. I stopped watching at some point during 12's run. I saw a few bits and bobs from 13's run. I'm considering picking it back up again, but it's just, it's not a really high priority fandom for me anymore. But good lord, I had 10 Sonic Screwdriver at some point. My friend built a giant TARDIS that I took pictures in. Rose, Clara, Donna, Amy, I can't choose who's my favorite companion. I always forget I was in this fandom. It's like, oh my oh, god, Jafira. Doctor Who exists. Big time rush. All I'll say is James was my favorite. I saw them in concert recently. I did read self-insert fanfics for James back in the day. And please listen to their new album if you haven't already. Glee! I forgot I was in the Glee fandom at some point. A lot of the artists I followed on DeviantArt were really into Glee, and so I joined them in their brain rot. There was a whole clean AU that took place at the academy they were at, the war Blurs, but it was inspired by Alice in Wonderland and all the characters were different and I really enjoyed that fic and all the art inspired. I can't say I was a big fan of all the characters except for maybe like Mike Chang, but I really liked the AUs people would come up with for fanfics. Stranger Things. I remember I was absolutely obsessed with it when it first came out and I forced my entire family to watch it with me. <laughs> I still like the first and second seasons the best, but I'm gonna keep watching until it ends. In regards to shipping, I'm pretty flexible. I'm perfectly happy with the canon ships, but I also don't mind the fanon ships either. Here's Here's a funny anecdote for you. I went to the Stranger Things experience the entire time, even though I'm kind of indifferent to Steady, my friend and I talked about Steady Omegaverse for the entire experience. He really likes Steady Omegaverse, and I'm just here for the ride, honestly. <laughs> So I got into Star Wars through my mom. She really got into it when she was young and so she would always watch the movies when I was little. I remember coming home from school from like first through third grade and she'd always be watching one of the episodes on the TV and I'd sit down and just watch them with her as I ate lunch. I actually saw Revenge of the Sith in theaters when it came out and that was quite the experience. And then I watched the Clone Wars series with my brother. It was fantastic. Rebels? It had its moments. I wouldn't say it was like the best Star Wars media out there, but I liked parts of it. I liked Kanan and Hera a lot. The Ahsoka Vader battle blew my mind. Fallen Order was fantastic. And then the Mandalorian was great. It's just Star Wars has so many 
bits and bobs and all sorts of media it's hard to just put it in the movie category but yeah as a whole Star Wars is like a staple fandom for me. I have mixed feelings about the sequels but I still am a fan I always will be. Heck my knockoff lightsaber is right here give it a sec. Two one. <laughs> Star Trek. So this one's interesting. I actually watched the alternate universe Chris Pine movies and that got me retroactively into the old show. I know my fanfiction history and have mad respect for Spurk. I also like the Spock and Uhura take in the newer movies and I did read a fair amount of fanfiction for them. Star Trek AUs are one of my favorite AUs to read for fanfics besides Star Wars AUs. Marvel. So I never was really super hardcore into Marvel like I was for DC but I still really do enjoy Marvel. I enjoy X-Men, I enjoy the Avengers, I like the stuff that wasn't covered really well in the movies like Fantastic Four, Spider-Man has my heart, my dad's a big fan of the Spider-Man comics and so I grew up with that influence as well. Most of the fics I've read for Marvel have more been like general fics versus shipping fics. I admit I did slide down a spidey pool rabbit hole for a hot second. <laughs> and of course Venom's delicious. We love a happy couple. But it's a very versatile and big fandom so it's easy to find what you want and avoid what you don't want. Ghibli! Okay so specifically I'm talking about Howl's Moving Castle and Spirited Away but I still enjoy the other movies of course but with those two particular man i of course had my howl girly face <laughs> that's my girl i read so much howl and sophie fanfic when i first watched the movie which was like in sophomore year i can't really determine if i had a massive crush on howl or if i wanted to be howl both both is good the whole moving castle thing with the door portal is just so cool to me still like oh this is so domestic but if i were to have a child I would like to decorate that nursery like Howl's bedroom. And then with Spirited Away, which I saw when I was younger, I was a big fan of Chihiro and Haku together. <laughs> he was just a cool dragon boy. I was like, oh man, I wish I had a cool dragon boy to take me places and like hug and stuff. And then later on when I was older, I read a lot of fics of like, oh, what happened if Haku and Chihiro met later on when they were older and then, you know, they meet again and it's really, really cute and they don't have to say goodbye anymore. Promare. So Promare Fever. <laughs> hit everyone like right before the pandemic. Like I remember the last con I went to before, you know, lockdown started was Anime Los Angeles and everyone, and I mean everyone, was decked out in Promare gear. There were Promare Ita bags, Promare posters everywhere, and it was freaking cool. And of course Galileo are adorable, so. <laughs> <laughs> For better or for worse, I am some iteration of Disney adults. Not a big fan of their live actions outside of Cinderella, but I grew up on the movies, so they have a very special place in my heart. But my god, I remember looking up Disney on fanfiction.net and coming across the most depraved Mickey, Minnie, NSFW smut I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I just, I remember being like, oh, I can't wait to see people writing stories about what happens after the happily ever after and stumbling across Mickey screwing Minnie's brains out. That might be part of the reason why I find it hard to take Disney seriously. <laughs> Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim AUs are one of my favorite fanfic AUs to read. It's just the fact that, you know, with the drift and how it works, you have to be in perfect synergy with your partner, whether you like each other or not, and you have to get along to save the world, but then you're opening yourself up to your memories and thoughts with the other person. They find out things about you that maybe you weren't ready to tell them, but it's gonna happen anyway because you have to save the freaking world and you have to keep each other in check or else you can't save the freaking world! Uh, you too. Kiss. You can't pilot a giant robot together if you're not in sync and you have to be in sync and open your minds up to each other regardless of how you feel! It makes such good fanfic material, like especially if one of them has their walls up but you know the other's like no let me in because we have to you know pilot a giant robot to fight some freaking sea monsters and so the other one does and it's like oh man tragic backstory unlocked and then ghost drifting can happen which means their minds are still linked even after they get out of the robot it's like the only one bed trope except for the fact that the bed is a giant robot and instead of mild discomfort not getting along means that everyone freaking dies. Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah, that one Nicolas Cage movie based on that snippet from Fantasia. This was really a fever dream fixation I had. I was really into Balthazar and Veronica, their tragic love story turned right. Read an obscene amount of fics for them, probably nearly every fic on fanfiction.net for them at the time. I guess their story captivated me, from her wanting just to be normal and starting a romance with him, to sacrificing herself so Balthazar could live, 
and having Morgana take over her body to Balthazar trying to free her from Morgana but her being trapped in the doll. It was a lot and they just wanted to be together in the end. Yeah, he looks kind of scruffy and haggard and she's gorgeous. That's the charm of it. Sky High, another My Hero Academia prototype. The grip this movie had on younger me. Loved me a good superhero movie and the fact that it was Disney Channel on top of it. In terms of ships, this pretty much summarizes my take. Me and Will are dating now. You didn't, you didn't pick War and Peace? No? Stupid bitch, what the fuck? Is it the most cohesive movie? Does it make a whole lot of sense? Eh. Is it fun? Fuck yeah. G.I. Joe! I completely forgot I had a G.I. Joe phase. I got into it after watching the movie. I know, I know, the movie was definitely something, but at the time I really enjoyed it and then just got really, really into the lore. Snake Eyes and Scarlet was my ship of choice. Their history together is just so sweet. Loki considering getting back into it because of them. And then there was a series on fanfiction.net where an author created this pilot OC that was shipped with Storm Shadow and I really enjoyed their series. Avatar, not the last airbender, the blue people. If you couldn't tell, I'm honestly just a sci-fi geek. Big blue aliens with tentacle hair make brain go boom. Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting this on the list because I read a massive amount of Prince Caspian and Susan fanfic. I had the biggest crush on Ben Barnes, Prince Caspian, and I love Susan. I saw a lot of myself in her, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna make these two kiss. I also liked exploring what if scenarios too. Like, oh, what if the Pevensies actually stayed and didn't go back to the real world? What if Susan and Caspian got married and they ruled over Narnia together? What if Edmund wasn't such a little I wasn't the biggest fan of the third movie just because it didn't have Susan and so Caspian couldn't be with her. I think he asked- No, he was with that star chick. I think I did read some fix with the star chick and him together. Yeah, just my presence in the Chronicles of Narnia fandom was because of Prince Caspian. <laughs> was anyone else weirdly obsessed with this movie like I was? The world building, the lore for this movie blew my mind as a kid. The Stitch Punk OCs were always super fun to look at. I had this peculiar era in like late middle school, early high school, where I rewatched all these non-Disney animated movies I loved as a little little kid and kind of just fell into the fandoms for them. And Swan Princess was one of them. Even though he's kind of a garbage person in hindsight, I really liked Prince Derek. I liked his his voice, his outfit, his haircut as a child. I don't know why I liked bowl cuts as a kid. I really liked Odette as a princess as well. I actually have a cosplay for her that I haven't worn yet, but I'm gonna take pictures in it. I had a weird attraction to Rothbard as well, partially because of his abilities and shape-shifting powers. <laughs> yeah, I read a lot of Dimitri and Anya fanfic back in the day. Some of it got pretty spicy too, but knowing them, it's not a surprise. The soundtrack is absolutely iconic. I used to be able to play a really challenging version of Once Upon a December on piano. I gotta find the sheet music for it again. Also would love to do an Anastasia cosplay one day. Which outfit? I do not know. <laughs> okay, well Cornelius was one of my very first fictional crushes as a kid. Yes, I loved that red bowl cut and those tight tights. His voice is so nice though. I mean, can you blame five-year-old me? And I actually was planning a Thumbelina cosplay at some point but I ran out of steam for it, so it's on hold until I get all the pieces I need. And I did read Thumbelina fanfic as well. Not just for Thumbelina and Cornelius though, I actually read a really, really good one involving the you bug what? guy, like an OC with him. They had this grand epic journey together and he became a better person at the end. I don't know what possessed me to read Thumbelina fanfic, but that's a very fond memory I have from it. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. No, but dead Barbie has such a special place in my childhood. My favorite movie is Barbie Nutcracker, although I also love the Fairytopia movies as well. Princess and the Popper is a classic, Swan Princess, Rapunzel, Magic of Pegasus. Really want to do a Clara cosplay at some point, like her Sugar Plum Princess outfit. But the tipping point for me putting it on here as like a fandom was because I shipped Nalu and Alina really hard. I wanted them to get together so bad as a kid, but then he ended up with Nori. But when I got older, I was like, wait, I like Nori and Alina together. Wait, Alina has two hands. I really liked the main pairings from Princess and the Pauper as a kid. Preminger's a queen, Bibbles are overlord. I did read fanfic for Barbie and the Island Princess as well. No, Tika was not in it. <laughs> Yukio was 
was my very first anime. I got into it partially because of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge series and also because my friends were really into it at the time. I had a whole deck. Seto Kaiba was my very first anime crush. Oh wow, another random brain blast. I was obsessed with Darts' henchman. You know, the guy who was like, the seal of Orikalkos. Seal of Orikalkos. That guy and like his gang. I read a lot of fanfics about them. Just like having adventures in life after they stopped working for Darts. I don't know why I fixated on those guys, but all right. Free Iwatobi Swim Club, my introduction to sports anime. Funnily enough, the second season gave me an existential crisis because that was when they were trying to figure out what they were gonna do with their lives and Haru was like, I wanna be free, I wanna swim. But the first season was just pure fan service. I remember watching that in eighth grade and I was like, oh my God, what is this show? Rin was my favorite though, the shark cry baby. And I was a Rin Haru shipper. Those shipping wars were Oof. Banana fish. <laughs> I can't talk about this fandom without freaking crying, dude. Fun fact though, I actually read the manga before watching the show, and I remember thinking, like, hmm, I wonder how they're gonna pull this off. Banana fish is just angsty, and uh, yeah. I was a wreck after watching and reading it. Love Ash Eiji though, they're so sweet. Naruto, one of my other first animes. I actually skipped around a fair amount in the original just because I wanted to get to Shippuden because Shippuden was when they were teenagers and there was more going on. There was the Akatsuki and the Akatsuki were really cool. Deidara was probably my favorite Akatsuki member, but I also really liked Itachi, of course, and then Pain. Good memories of talking about the Naruto Shippuden manga leaks with my chemistry friends in sophomore year when we were supposed to be talking about friggin i don't know moles slack butler <laughs> oh god this was a weird era like i watched it's my freshman year of high school and i learned how to play a bunch of the music for it on piano really liked the first season the second season was just all over the place because it didn't follow the manga and it just kind of went on its own. The third season came back to the manga with like Book of Circus and all that. And then Sherlock was involved at some point. But the Grim Reapers were my favorite characters, Will in particular. Oof. And then Ronald was the guy with like the blonde hair and he was really cute. I remember people used to compare him to America from Italia because their hair was similar. My first couple anime expos, I just remember seeing so many people cosplaying as CL in like his princess pink poofy dress and it was like wow that's so pretty how are you walking around it looks so uncomfortable Natalia there's a lot I could say about this fandom I kind of want to give it its own video at some point because being in that fandom was something else I remember all the tumblr ask blogs of like ask England or 2p England because 2p was like a whole au the author came up with where it was like you know player two versions of the Italia characters with like slightly different outfits and like people ran with it and turned them into like whole different personalities and characters for that matter and there was a whole card suite AU2 where like they were royalty and they each had like their own card associated with them. Those were actually really good though. <laughs> Recently I tried finding all of my old Hitalia fanfic bookmarks from back in my freshman and sophomore years of high school but like 90% of them have been deleted so that's lost history right there. I watched so many AMVs and MEPs for Hitalia that like changed my brain chemistry. I really, really wanted to cosplay Switzerland or Austria because that was during my intensive piano days and I played a lot of Chopin and then he also played Chopin so I was like, oh my God, Austria and I have so much in common. Death Note, it's so You're funny dead seeing dead. people discover Death Note nowadays and absolutely simp for light. I think people do thirst after L as well, but when I first watched it, when I was like, again, freshman year of high school, people were going gaga over L. Like everyone wanted a piece of L. Saw a lot of Misa Misa cosplays in the early days too. Mello was one of my favorite characters. And of course, Ellen Light were another big ship, but I never really got into it. Code Geass, this show gave me such intense brain rot, but I feel like my time in the fandom was relatively short compared to other anime fandoms I was in. For Suzaku and Yuffie, I would read so many fix-it fix for them because I was so sad about how they ended. <laughs> I liked C2 and Lelouch together. I think I did delve into some Lelouch and Suzaku as well. Lelouch had so many different girls paired with them. There was C2, there was Shirley, there was Callan. <laughs> 
was gonna do a panting stocking cosplay with a friend of mine who got the whole stocking outfit, but I just never got around to getting panties and so it was on hold. And then we both lost interest in it at the same time, so it's been indefinitely on hold. This was a fun one though. I liked seeing all the pop culture references in it. Absolutely wild to watch though. Like I think a lot of it did go over my head when I first watched it, but looking back it was like, oh damn, this is like really, really raunchy. Princess Jellyfish. Princess Jellyfish is just one of those pieces of media that you want to just fold into your body when you want something warm and sweet and soft. I wish we had more of the anime. We only had one season, but I just love looking at the fashion and the clothing. It was so ethereal and pretty. The fandom was really chill too. I don't remember anything actually really happening there. It was pretty quiet except for people like arguing about, no, Tsukimi should end up with Kurinosuke. No, she should end up with his older brother. No, she should just be by herself. What you cool. I was really bummed that the anime became a total mess. I cosplayed Rize from it once upon a time ago and Tsukiyama was my favorite character. I know, I know. Tomato, tomato, tomato. Oh Your motion call was like the weirdest anime to take hold of my brain and be like, no, you're into this now. But I loved this stupid biking anime so much. I watched it all with a friend of mine. We'd be dying from our classes and then we'd come home and just crash on the couch and watch it and be like, <laughs> funny biking men go, wee. <laughs> Makashima and Todo were my favorites and I liked their ship together. <laughs> I also liked Minami. Was his name Minami? Manami, that's his name. Manami and Onoda. Onoda and Manami together are also really cute. I got into Yo Mushi Pedal like way after the fandom hype for it died. Apparently it started peaking in like 2016, 2017. And by the time I got into it in like 2019, it had passed its prime. But the upside of that was that a bunch of fan artists were selling their last bits of Yo Mushi merch. And so I got a bunch of it for really, really cheap. Going Diamond Tail Ace Diamond. was an anime that I got into towards the end of my my college years. I watched it with the same friend I watched Yoamushi pedal with. I got into not necessarily a rare pair, but it was a smaller ship for this fandom. Because there was the main ship with Miyuki and Sawamura, and then Furia. Furia was like the guy who was always like the Haru type. He was like, oh, he was kind of like called the polar bear because he was used to colder climates, and when he was playing in hotter climates, he kind of like crashed a little bit. Har Haruchi? Haruchi? He was the guy with the pink hair in front of his eyes and he played with the wooden bat for a while. Yeah, I liked those two together. But I did also like Miyuki and Sabamura. There's a lot of great fanfic and fan art for those two. <laughs> Jujutsu guys. It's always so funny trying to look up JJK stuff and then seeing pictures of Jungkook from BTS. It's like, oh yeah, you guys share an acronym. Multi-fandom woes. Um, yeah, all I can say about being in the JJK fandom is just pain. It's unpredictable pain because you don't know what's gonna happen until it does and you're like, oh wow, that was sick, but oh god, no! Sato Sugu has my whole heart. My experience with the fandom has been pretty neutral. Like, I know it has its bad sides, but I know it has its good sides, and for the most part, I just stick to my corners and everything's been fine. Like, it's not the best or worst fandom I've ever been part of, so works for me. Skate the infinity. Hey there, Bros and non-binary hoes. It's just cute. I can't really say much about it. I love Ranga. I love Matcha Blossom. I really like reading fix where like they're in college and either they're long distance and trying to make it work or freaking long is going to the Olympics for snowboarding and Rucky's like, yo, I'm doing skateboarding stuff in Japan. I love you, bud. And then Matcha Blossom being like tired parents that are finally realizing their feelings for each other or at least acting upon them. Love the fan content. Love the animatics and the fan art and the fan fix. It's just, I, I personally I really like it. Dur -ra -ra -ra. This was also one of my first animes and I remember watching it and really really enjoying all the intersecting stories and having my mind blown of like oh my gosh this is how this connects with this and this person knows this person and oh. I did like Shizaya and they're one of my first BL ships but they never really gave me intense brain rot. Like I read fix for them and I liked the fan art but like it never really awakened anything in me you know like some ships I think about and I go like feral, but like these ones, it's just like, oh yeah, this was a ship in my past and it was nice. Whereas I'm like barking up a tree if you mention Makashima and Toto from Yomushi Petal. My favorite character though was the pharmacist who had the hots for the Dulahan, the headless girl. Yeah, those two were a really cute couple. Weird show, but I mean, I liked it at the time. And you always saw a Shizuo cosplayer with like the giant stop sign running around cons being like, ah, and chasing after easy at cosplayers. Full Metal Alchemist. 
Brotherhood. This is one of the best animes of all time, and my experience in the fandom was good. I have no complaints about it. Lun Fun and Ling were one of my favorite ships, as well as Hawkeye and Colonel Mustang, of course. May and Alphonse were really cute, and then of course Ed and Winry. This is like the textbook definition of a fandom where I was like, I had a good time while I was there, and it was fun while it lasted. Funnily enough, even though I got into Attack on Titan in high school, I really, really got into it my freshman year of college. Like, I don't know why, but it was my comfort anime for my early college years. I was kind of like, what the when all the political intrigue stuff was going on, but then I regained interest after I finally realized, oh, that's how it's all connected, and now Aaron's going batch. Oh! Shipping wise, I was pretty flexible, but my number one and like the ship that I could not like mix and match with was Arui. Erwin Smith and Levi. There was an Arui Ballet AU that absolutely destroyed me when I read it. Like it sucker punched me and it took over my brain for like a whole week after I read it. I still love those two together. I really liked reading fix where they met in another life after they like reincarnate. That was like the soothing balm for the absolute pain pit that was Attack on Titan. Haikyuu. Thinking back on all of the anime I've watched over the years, I think Haikyuu is still my favorite anime. It's one that I'll be able to watch time and time again and never get sick of. The messages they're able to bake into volleyball of all things makes me hope for the future. Like it helps keep me motivated and optimistic as I'm going through life. Seeing the journeys each character goes on and rooting for every team as you go along and get to know them. Like yes, it's a sports anime and there is a formula and elements that it follows to keep that criteria, but it's really something special at the heart of it. The fact that you're able to empathize with each character or like see where they're coming from at the very least. And even if you're not Rooting for them, you're like, oh man, it's gonna suck when you lose. <laughs> I got into Haikyuu when the second season started up. I was 19 when the third season came out. It's really cheesy saying it, but like Haikyuu was always there when I was really, really growing up and I'm grateful to it for that. My favorite team to this day is still Nekoma though. Yuri on Ice, what a time to be alive when this was premiering, holy crap. Yuri on Ice was coming out my sophomore year of college and I actually did reaction videos to it that were kind of like the beginning of my start on YouTube. And that was also a rough period of my life. So I'm glad Yuri and Ice was there for that too. This fandom was tough because I saw so many good parts of it, but at the same time, it was really, really messy in other parts. All this constant fighting over like, did the kiss actually happen? Are they baiting us? Yes, it did. No, it didn't. Is victory actually canon? Question mark. They're married, your honor. But regardless of all of that, there's so much great fic for this fandom and the fan art and the edits and the AMVs and all of that were Fantastic. I did a little Yuri cosplay. Welcome to the Madness broke my brain a little bit. My Hero Academia. My Hero Macadamia. Todoroki is probably my favorite character. I did cosplay him a few years ago and that was fun. The whole Todoroki family drama is really fun to keep up with, as horrible as it is to say. I just remember after Voltron ended, a bunch of people jumped ship from Voltron into My Hero Academia and I feel so bad for all of like the veteran My Hero Academia fans. Like I think I started actively watching My Hero Academia when the second season came out. I remember because because I don't think I've ever shared this, but the reason I got into My Hero Academia was because a friend of mine who I had a human sexuality class with in college would read the manga and doshinjis in lecture hall. How'd you like our educational system now? In high school host club. I did read a few Kiyoya X like OC fix here and there. Apparently his canon ending's kind of depressing though. He ends up in like an arranged marriage and has like next to no attachment to his wife. Do not quote me on that though. It's been a hot second. I actually kind of forgot about Bleach's existence, not gonna lie. But when I did get a brain blast, I suddenly got reminded of my Okiyota standing days. God, I loved that guy. That moment when Okiyota revealed feels that he's only the fourth most powerful Espada though. Whew. I also liked Rukia and Ichigo together. I got really sad when him and Orihime were endgame. Run With The Wind is an underrated sports anime. Not exactly my favorite, cause not gonna lie, even fictional track and field stresses me out. I do not like to run, but the messages throughout the show were really inspiring. Tiger and Bunny, a superhero anime. Kind of reminiscent of My Hero Academia before My Hero Academia. A lot of fun, great character designs. Completely forgot I had a massive crush on Barnaby back in the day. And honestly, also on Blue Rose. I mean, look at her. Trigon! Hell yes. Space westerns are my f 
jam. I got into Stampede first and then watched the 1998 anime. I really want to get my hands on the manga once it's reprinted. It's so good. It's simultaneously really out there and yet very familiar feeling. Vash is such a wonderful protagonist. Wolfwood's whole story from being Vash's babysitter working for knives to trying to do his own thing. Vashwood lives in my head rent-free. I've already exhausted most of the fix on AO3 for them. How many times have I watched Trigon TikTok compilations on YouTube? How many times have I full body shuddered looking at a couch? How many times have I searched for plant to I'll never tell. Oof, so I got into K-pop in my junior year of high school and it started off with wow, Big Bang and Shiny. My Big Bang bias was top. My Shiny bias was, and still is probably Key. Key and Onyu, those are my faves. And then later on, I got into EXO and that took over my brain for a while. EXO, my bias was... Chanyeol? It's so funny though. I remember reading so many fics of them with like their superpowers because their whole concept is like they were aliens from a different planet and they came to Earth and they had all like these different powers. Like for instance, Chanyeol could control fire and then Baekhyun could control light. They had this really cool cinematic universe thing going on and I remember they had this whole like exo like trailers and teasers leading up to their big comeback and their comeback had nothing to do with their superpowers. Oh, BTS hit me like I'm a freaking truck in 2015. My very first music video from BTS was dope and then I saw Fire and Run and I really got into the whole the most beautiful moment in life era. When Blood, Sweat and Tears came out it just GIF set after GIF set took over Tumblr. I had floor tickets to see them in 2018 and that changed my life. Now that they're all doing their solo stuff and we're just waiting on them reuniting whenever they do, I'm still following what they're doing, but it's definitely different. Tay, Tay is my bias from BTS. That man, just, he can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> Twice. I love Twice. They're probably my favorite girl group. Jihyo and Mina are my biases. They're just such good girls. Their music is like really, really nice, feel good music. Honestly, Fancy is like one of the default songs that plays in my head when I'm not thinking about anything. <laughs> I used to play Animal Crossing a lot when I was in elementary school with Wild World on my Nintendo DS Lite. But then Animal Crossing New Horizons came out during the pandemic and I just got a switch and gobbled that up for a few months. It was so much fun designing my own island, but something that I did not expect to get into was the Tom Nook and Red rabbit hole. Their divorced husbands, your honor. Seeing people draw the characters in like really hot human form was certainly an experience. And then the whole Raymond craze was a fandom event I am shocked I lived through. <laughs> I kind of just want to make a list of like the fandom events I lived through. That could be another video, damn. So much of the Animal Crossing fan art was immaculate and I'm so sad that a lot of it never got to see the light of day at conventions because by the time conventions were open and safe to attend, the Animal Crossing craze kind of died down. And so a lot of the Animal Crossing merch was just in like clearance bins. But they made a killing online at least. Token Rambu was a game where you collected swords that had really, really hot human forms. I don't know if they released an English version of it or they were planning to at some point, I think think but they had an anime it was okay but my favorite character from that game was Minazuke Munichika. I shipped him with the Kitsune sword, Kogetsune Maru. The fanfics were strange for that fandom, but I really enjoyed them. The character designs were awesome though. It's just a shame that I wasn't in this fandom longer because it was relatively chill. Genshin Impact. <sighs> it's a lot and I'm tired. <laughs> Sid Link got me into Breath of the Wild, but it's a lovely game. And I'll never forget this image whenever I think of Sid Link. Fire Emblem Three Houses. I got into this video game because of this mofo. I saw his one-eyed, feral, greasy ass and was like, all right, I gotta get a piece of that. Jimmy Lith, whether it's with male Byleth or female Byleth, is my favorite ship. I also really like Claude, Claude and Dimitri or Claude and Byleth. Yeah, again, another instance of putting the fandom cart before the fandom horse. Overwatch. I really enjoyed playing Overwatch throughout college. My main was Orisa. However, I haven't played in a hot second and I know that Overwatch 2 exists, so I gotta give that a try at some point. Back when I was playing it, I read a lot of Mikanzo fanfic. I really liked Genji and Mercy as well. I hate their ship name though, Gersi. It's like Gersi. I did read a lot of Gen for this fandom though, because it's similar to like Batfam and Justice League, where it's just a bunch of 
heroes that I want to have domestic slice of life shenanigans with. There was a good blend of stuff for Overwatch, but man, dealing with the annoying dude bros was a pain in the ass. Mystic Messenger, miss me. This was an era, holy hell. This was my freshman year of college and like getting those stupid calls and messages at like 2 a.m. Everyone loved cool and calm and collected Jum and Han, but I was a Zen girl all the way. Seven was great too, but Zen was my first route. So he had a special place in my heart. I was gonna call play unknown like it was seven's evil twin brother spoilers Ooh. but never got around to it i miss miss me i don't really want to play it again though it was really stressful <laughs> The Adventure Zone, Taz. A friend recommended Taz to me and I got in with the balance arc and I fell in love with Taco and Magnus and Merle. I didn't read a lot of fic for it, but I really liked the fan art and the cosplays. Was really debating if I wanted to do a Taco cosplay, but eventually I just didn't get around to it. I'll never forget listening to the final episode, sitting on my living room couch in my college apartment, crying my eyes out because I got to the part where Magnus reunites with Julia and yeah, my roommate walked in and was like, holy shit, are you okay? And I was like, no. <laughs> I really enjoyed Amnesty as well. I love cryptozoology. And so getting that kind of monster of the week was really cool. And it was spooky at times. I got like halfway through Ether C, but haven't finished yet. I got preoccupied with other stuff as you do. But yeah, Taz is great. The Magnus Archives. This is the newest podcast fandom I'm part of. And I actually just started listening to the Magnus Archives. I was in the middle of making candles for my store and it was kind of a mistake because I'd be up really late, think like two or three in the morning, just pouring my candles, listening to Mr. Jonathan Sims talk about horrors beyond my comprehension and think like, wow, I'm not sleeping tonight. The type of horror it is really gets under your skin. Like I remember being terrified in bed, being like, wow, I am too scared to go to the bathroom right now. But it's good. It's good storytelling. And the fact that it's so scary, it's amazing. But yeah, definitely something you should space out during the daylight hours because I listened to the first like, 30 episodes over the span of like three nights and I was a shivering mess. Love that flavor of horror though, like cosmic horror. Brilliant. Welcome to Night Vale was my first exposure to podcast storytelling and I still look upon it very fondly. I don't recall when I stopped tuning in, but I listened to it throughout college actually. Unlike the Magnus Archives, Welcome to Night Vale is something I can listen to at night. It just, it's a nice spooky bedtime story in my head. Listening to Cecil's dulcet tones as to why you shouldn't enter the dog park or else you'll never be seen again does wonders for my anxiety. I mean, it was literally brought to life visually by the fans. AUs, if you will, of what these characters look like or, you know, how you want to interpret them because it's an auditory medium. Don May is the most recent group of fandoms that have taken over my life. I got into Don May through Heaven Official's Blessing at the end of 2021, early 2022. That was quickly followed by The Grand Master of Demonic Cultivation, MDCS. More recently, Scum Villain Self Saving System, SVSSS. That's like the holy trinity of popular Don May fandom. I love them all for different reasons, and I kind of just rotate which one I'm focusing on at the moment based on my mood. But yeah, Heaven Official's Blessing, I look upon very fondly because it introduced me to this wonderful world of gay Chinese fantasy. It's been quite a journey seeing the fandom balloon as more and more people discover it and it gets more and more exposure through social media and people are seeing the English translations in stores. Besides MXTX's works, I'm also a big fan of Word of Honor. I'm still working on it, but I already love the main pair. <laughs> Wen Kuxing is my man. When he puts on that red eyeliner, you know it's over. <laughs> and it's different. I like how different it is from MXTX's works, but it's more grounded, which I guess comes from it being a wuxia versus a xianxia. And I I also really got into A Thousand Autumns. I watched the Donghua and I read the first book and I really want to see what happens next. I did cheat a little and listen to the audio dramas though, so. <laughs> and there you have it. All of the fandoms I've been a part of, or at least I remember being a part of, over the last 15 or so years. My god. <laughs> yeah, I've been sitting here for like over three hours talking about all these fandoms, as you can tell by the lack of daylight around me. But thank you so much for sticking around. Let me know if we have any overlap with our fandom lists. And what's your criteria of determining if you were in a fandom or not? Did any of the fandoms on my list shock you? And if there were any big fandom events or incidents you were privy to, or maybe we both were privy to, let me know, help me refresh my memory, and there may be a video topic in the near future. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'm gonna have a nice hot shower and eat dinner, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Annyeong! <laughs>